Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today here in England for something that is going to be quite the treat. In fact, we've popped out to Dunsfold Park to visit none other than Gordon Murray Automotive to take a look at something brand new, something which is quite literally a tease for me that would be my dream next hypercar. We are talking a V12 that is naturally aspirated with a manual gearbox and removable roof panels. Yes, today we're taking a first look at the new GMA T33 Spider. Now, Gordon himself has just been showing me around the new car and the colorway is exactly what I would go for. But let's head inside where we have the complete lineup with the T50, the T50S, the T33 Coupe and the new T33 Spider to go and take a full look in detail. Let's do it here at Gordon Murray Automotive, the new T33 Spider. We have special permission to head in then and share with you what is behind this door, but think light. Gordon's lightweight ethos behind any project he approaches, but come on in because this little display, and I can see over to the side, the new car as well. We'll get to that in just a moment. This is actually the first car that Gordon Murray designed when he was 18 years old. The very car right here. And in fact, up on the wall behind are the original diagrams hand drawn that he created. In fact, those were kept by his mother and then sent over once she realized he wasn't going to be coming back to South Africa. Still original as they were. Not only that, have a look at this. A complete history summarized in one room with the different tools and implements that Gordon has used. And in fact, the compasses on the desk are the very ones that we used to pen five world championship winning Formula One cars, as well as the legendary McLaren F1. We also have a Cooper Mark IV here from 1951. This was a car that Gordon, at six years old, can remember his father working on. But come on in, because this is quite the sight to behold right now. The first time I am seeing the T50S Niki Lauda, the racetrack version of the T50 itself. I've never seen it before and I need to come back to that in a moment. But alongside, we have the fan car, the T50, of course, based around this lightweight ethos, but combined with the V12 engine, the central seating position, three seater, and now confirmed ready to go into production. Behind me also, the T33 Coupe that I took a look at for the first time last year. The first of three different models based on the T33 platform, sharing a reworked version of the V12 engine. But today, the car that we've come to see is right beside me. Meet the new T33 Spider. Well, just look at it. The latest introduction from Gordon Murray Automotive, the T33 Spider. It is stunning, especially the way that this car is presented very close to my heart. Now, this is all about taking the driving emotion even further. We have the manual gearbox, we have the naturally aspirated V12, and now we have removable roof panels that can be stowed away in the storage area at the front, still with the storage pods on either side of the car, which we're going to take a look at in a moment. It's very clever how this has been done, but this car looks magnificent. Retaining the design of the T33 Coupe, we have this classical elegance to it, very much inspired by cars of the 60s, but a very, very small footprint. It's a diminutive little machine, but still with this incredibly potent record-breaking engine, which we can actually see and take a look at as well in a moment. But of course, this is also the first time we've been able to see the interior of T33. The previous introduction model didn't have an interior that we could showcase in full, and we're going to be able to take a look through that in just a moment as well. But this is everything that I love in a car. The engine, the gearbox, the idea behind it, what it's all about. It's something that I'm standing here, especially when it's shown in a paint color like this, the metallic pearlescent light blue over the silver wheels that is really quite taking my fancy and there's a lot to tell you about. So let's dive into the various different elements of this, the design, the interior and the engine to learn more about T33 Spider. 
The Spider follows a year after the introduction of the Coupe. In fact, the idea here with GMA is to introduce a new model every year. So obviously from the outset of the Coupe's development, there has always been the plan for the Spider to follow. And as such, the weight penalty of adding the removable roof panels is a mere 18 kilograms. In fact, it will be lower than that in the final production version because of course the carbon fiber monocoque has been developed from the outset to have the rigidity ready for the Spider's introduction. Production. In terms of changes between the two, there are very, very few. This is, of course, a prototype model to introduce the car. There will be a slight shuffling forwards of the windshield. The A pillar line, the roof line here, will shuffle forward by 110 mil just to give slightly more of an opening experience. But similarly to the coupe, we have the snorkel intake over the top that's affixed directly to the engine, which means that at idle, that is going to be vibrating and shaking over your head. Just consider what that will be like with the V12 engine the intake right above you you can actually open the rear window as well that will be lowerable with the switch gear just up on towards the top and of course the roof panels removed it is going to be everything that a purist driving experience is all about of course big changes back here on the rear deck gone is the window over the back and in fact i'm just going to come over to the t33 coupe model to give you a quick reminder of how this looked obviously the smoother lines of the coupe shape you can see the way the intake dives in underneath that rear window but it still carries through this floating buttress that goes over the top of the rear of the passenger compartment until back here you have the vents of course for the cooling this is all to do with managing the airflow the active spoiler neatly tucked into the bodywork at the rear of the car and of course the spider badging that you would expect to find on the t33 with the graphic here giving a nod to the cam covers on the v12 itself which i'll show you in a moment there's a new style of carbon fiber that's used this raw effect almost but upcycled carbon and the way that it's presented, the two exhaust tailpipes right down in the center that will of course be giving us that glorious, glorious soundtrack. It's a new wheel design for this car, 20 inch wheel at the rear, I think with a 19 inch wheel at the front, but a wheel that of course accentuates the feel of the car and what it's about. It's a very, very small thing. In fact, the car is even smaller than a Lotus Amira, which is not exactly a big car. It's made to be about driving and enjoying the experience and you feel that just being in its presence in a moment i will be able to take a step on board to run you through the interior to show you down into the footwell because the pedals are a masterpiece themselves but before that i want to head over to show you the engine this is just glorious this is the cosworth gma2 v12 the engine created for the t33 following from the t50 it's a four liter naturally aspirated v12 engine that is the lightest most power dense fastest revving v12 in existence a four liter or 3994 cc naturally aspirated 12 cylinder engine and in fact you can see here the yellow cam covers these are of course yellow for the t33 models they were heritage orange for the original t50 they were red for the t50s yellow across all of the different versions of the t33 and you'll see that going forwards with a new color for each future derivative but this produces 617 horsepower down slightly from the 650 of the t50 but with the intention of it being even more usable there are 451 newton meters of torque which you get 90 percent of peak torque all the way from 4500 rpm to 10500 on its way to the red line at 11100 rpms that's about a thousand rpm down from t50 part of it being more usable but completely reworked here with the exhaust system through in the manifolds of course but it's so small and compact and that's what's so impressive about it all but i want to show you as well something else because so many customers had seen these and said they wouldn't mind having a show engine for their garages and Gordon actually developed this stand you can see below this entire stand weighs only 2.75 kilos with the carbon fiber parts titanium 5 mil bolts going through and can support an engine that must be 100 plus kilos with something that weighs only 2.75 that's almost as impressive itself and it's that attention to detail and all these other things that you find around GMA
Now, one of the biggest things with the T33, and of course also with the T50, is the usability. The idea is that these are cars you could daily drive if you want to, and so many of the customers have said that's exactly what their plans are going to be. Now, with the T33, you have 295 liters of luggage capacity. That's an awful lot through both a storage area in the front and the side lockers. Now, the Targa roof panels can be stowed away up front. So to show you the amount of space that we have just in here, if I can open this up, we have the storage area that will fit two of your carry-on suitcases, for example. In the final version, it will tuck a little bit more under the front as well. And of course, that will house your roof panels. If I close this carefully back down as well, just drop it into place, knowing that this is a one of one right now and come round towards the side because these compartments house additional storage. They're actually hinged from the rear. They pop open from the front. You can then pull this out and you will see how there are those side lockers on each side. And in fact, this is the luggage from the T50 for the time being, but the T33 luggage set will have a lower case and an upper case for either side. To be able to make the most of it, this is genuinely a car with a convertible roof mechanism where you can still take some luggage away with you on a road trip or adventure. And that kind of thing is exactly up my street. We also, on these, which are hinged magnificently, have soft clothes to pull them in. The door handles are right on here, which pop open the doors, and then we'll take a look inside. With the dihedral door open, let's take a first look then at the T33's interior. We're going to go through this in detail, the seats, the different controls, and explore it in full. I'll take a seat on board in just a moment. But as you can see, in many ways, it's about simplicity and driver focus, but also engineering art. And in fact, I want to show you no finer example of that than looking at the pedal set down here in the driver's footwell, where we have the engineering of those pedals and the way it's all presented. Now the T33 can be had as either left-hand drive or right-hand drive, down to the customer's preference. And then, of course, the six-speed manual shifter in the center with those very, very narrow gates, which means that it has a very small throw on the shifter itself. I'll try that in just a second. Of course, the rev counter, up to over 11,000 RPM, flanked by the two displays. On the right-hand side will be your Android Auto or your Apple CarPlay, but no touch screens. It's about the drive. It's about being driver focused. And in fact, just look around this. The seats have these carbon fiber shells with the pads lining the insides. The rear has the bodywork color coming through to the cabin. You have storage with space here for a liter bottle. For example, more storage here and the trays sitting underneath the console as well. The rear window Window, as I mentioned, that can be lowered down. And you can see, of course, as well, how the Targa roof panels will slide in from either side and be latched down into place. Looking around, lots of exposed carbon on the seat and around the side, of course, for the monocoque itself as well. The fly-off handbrake lever just here and the controls that you have around. But let me take a seat inside to see what it feels like very much dream hypercar territory being seated inside the t33 and one of the most noticeable things actually is how low the front scuttle sits now you'll notice the vertical windshield wiper opposed to having horizontal wipers and the reason for that is that if you had the traditional wiper layout you'd need to have a higher scuttle with the covers to protect them so by doing this means the visibility forwards is unreal and in fact even the arches have their highest point right over the very center of the front wheels so for positioning it's going to be magical to drive the feeling is going to be really really quite something now of course the shifter and this is just a model but it has these very very close gates and just knowing what this is going to be like i cannot wait to click this in between the gears it's just that automotive perfection to be completely honest that we aspire and dream about all inside this car. You have your controls here for your phone integration. Of course, you have your driving mode selectors here as well, but it's not cluttered. It's not over the top. The dashboard is very, very simple. Again, it's about lightweight. It's about ensuring that no kilos are in this that don't need to be, because ultimately performance comes from avoiding all of the weight that we see nowadays with the addition of batteries and electric motors and things. It's the completely different angle on it all and being sat in here knowing of course that the scoop is going to be pulling in 
the air over your head. Now, you might be wondering, therefore, about the rear view mirror, given that sits right behind me. This will be a camera system mounted up on the rear deck as well. But bringing this colour in here is something I always quite liked about my original first ever proper sports car. My V8 Vantage Roadster is how it did exactly that kind of thing through the back. And I can only begin to imagine driving this, the small steering wheel, which also has shift paddles on the back because on one side is the horn, the other side is the lights as it happens, but very few other controls, again, keeping it uncluttered. To show you the driver's perspective then, this is your view out towards the front. You can see the ground incredibly close to the nose of the car. Of course, either side of the binnacle, you have some of your controls on the right hand side, your climate controls, air conditioning settings. Towards the left hand side, you have your wipers, your lights, and also your additional GT and Sport driving settings, the GMA V12 graphic in the very center of the steering wheel, but it's a really small wheel with a very narrow grip. And that's something I really like in a car that's focused on driving. Of course, even having an actual handbrake, and this is a fly-off handbrake, so once it's on, it will drop back to the ground um, once you've released it, is quite a novelty in the current world. But to replace that with an electronic handbrake would add a couple of kilos against the ethos of the car. We also have the plaque just here, T33 chassis number SP1 Gordon Murray Automotive. That will be where each of the 100 cars have their numbered plaques. But looking around, I really like the look of this. We actually have a slightly asymmetric design with the different colored pinstripes. My side is a blue as opposed to the slightly off-white that we have over towards the passenger side. And then the view all around is just, it's just really nice. This is, of course, the control to lower that rear window, as mentioned with the snorkel sitting only 20 or 30 centimetres away from my head while I'm in here looking out at the T50 and the T50S. Stepping out of the cabin, it's amazing actually how spacious it is inside considering the diminutive package of the car overall. There's plenty of room for the occupants of the vehicle along with the amount of storage space as mentioned. In fact, the buttons to open the side pods are just inside the door shuts to pop those open on the respective sides. As we come around towards the back, I mentioned the camera for the rear view mirror that will be housed here along with the upper third brake light. As we come towards the back, of course, lots of openings for the cooling of the V12 and the aerodynamics, where unlike the T50, which uses the fan to help with downforce, of course, this takes a slightly different approach using ground effect and also using a stepped diffuser, which you can see runs right underneath the car to help keep it planted down to the road while allowing the upper surfaces and the bodywork to carry this elegance, as I mentioned, this timelessness of the design. It's not littered with wings and veins and spoilers and all sorts of different aero pieces on the bodywork. It's a classical beauty. In two or three decades down the line, this will still be a beautiful car to behold. And that's the idea of it. It draws on the ethos of being lightweight, but also being simple in that effect. In fact, the T50 was named after Gordon's 50 years working in the automotive design industry. The T33, you could argue, is the entry level GMA car, but of course, this in its own right is something absolutely brilliant in so many different ways. Just look at it here. It's hard to portray quite how small this car actually is. And the idea with this section back here was to give it a different look, opposed to, for example, having buttresses that ran back towards the rear deck, which would effectively just mimic the appearance of the coupe, but without the window over there. Instead, the idea was to give this car its own look. In some ways, such a different car to the T50, despite both being based around this V12 engine, manual gearbox, driving emotion configuration. It would be rude to be here and not take a look at this lineup. To think that Gordon Murray Automotive as a car company in this respect was born four or five years ago and now this is the product portfolio and this in particular the T50S Niki Lauda. There are 25 of these to be made. Of course, cars that link to the motorsports history, they'll each be named, in fact, after different race wins. But we're talking a car that boasts over 700 horsepower, weighs about 850 kilograms, and with all of this downforce aerodynamics, the fan at the back, the size of this diffuser, happens to carry as well around 1.2 tons of downforce. 850 kilos, 1.2 tons of downforce, central seat position in a car that looks like this. The T50S, named Nicky Lauda, in honor, of course, of the legend. 
<laughs> I have very few words for how epic that is. And then T50, T50 itself. This is a car that weighs under a thousand kilos, 980 kilos or so, central seating position, offers 650 horsepower from the V12. It's Gordon Murray bringing his knowledge and experience of the McLaren F1, of course, from a few generations, a few decades ago, into the current time to build the best car that could ever be built. The ultimate road car driving experience, the glass of the cabin and the way this is presented in a fairly neutral color, the silver paintwork with that orange central seat to remind you what it's all about there. And honestly, hearing these, and of course now they're actually in production here as well and have had the final sign off soon to be delivered to customers. <laughs> There's something that just makes me giddy being in the presence of this car, just to know what it is, what it represents. And then there's this, the T33 Spider, which is, it's just me in a nutshell. Now what's fascinating as well, I guess, is the price point has had to move up fairly significantly, almost a 50% increase over the T33 Coupe because of increases in costs around the world, materials, supplier costs, um, etc. And it's obviously something that has to be taken into account with a car like this. But I'm looking at it and I'm dreaming. I'm really and truly dreaming because if you're looking back at the history of the automobile, if you're looking back at what we've been lucky to see, to witness, to hear about over decades that have gone by, this is the modern pinnacle. This is potentially something that might not exist long into the future. Yet, here it is, a V12, a four litre V12 with a manual gearbox, an open roof experience in a road car that's also been federalized, that can also be delivered in the United States. Today has been special. It's a big thanks to Gordon Murray for his time to show me around the car himself and to the team here for making it possible to come and take a first look at what right now I'm going to call my next dream hypercar, quite literally. That is something I'm going to go and lie in bed and dream about tonight, because that to me is perfection. I'm looking forward to trying one. So thank you very much for watching guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot. And I hope you've enjoyed this first look at the GMA, Gordon Murray Automotive T33 Spider. That's it for now. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.